Suji built seven prefabricated homes at the foot of the Himalaya to shelter 16 nuns. The Buddhist community in Taiwan has come together to pray for those injured at the Bali water park explosion. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Dennis Wu. Thank you for joining us. Here in Nepal, a group of nuns from Bingu Gumpa Nunnery, which was situated within the Himalaya, began displaced following the April earthquake and are currently seeking shelter at the foot of the mountain. As their current shelter is overcrowded and the conditions are not ideal, Cixi volunteers called on locals to join in a cash for work project to erect seven prefab shelters for 60 nuns. Within a simple prefab classroom as the prototype, 19 cash for work participants and four local volunteers work together to assemble seven prefab shelters for 60 displaced nuns from Bigu Gumpa Nunnery. The day by day, things were worsening as the mountain behind the nunnery was falling down. All the rocks are coming down and they're afraid that someday because of the landslides is going to make things difficult. Situated 5,000 meters above sea level in the Himalayas, the Bigu Gumpa nunnery was completely destroyed during the April quake, forcing the nuns to settle in a temporary shelter at the foot of the mountain. As the shelter is overcrowded, city volunteers called on local residents to help erect prefab shelters to accommodate these displaced nuns. Each morning before they get to work, cash for work participants set some time aside to watch Master Jin Yin's morning sermon. Among the volunteers helping out is 18-year-old Supriyam. The purpose is very simple, that we should help the ones who are in need because, because being a human being, we should help each other. As two heads are better than one, volunteers and cash for work participants hope to accomplish their mission as soon as possible. Summer vacation has started here in Taiwan, and to help children make the best of their free time, city officers across the country are holding summer camps. Later, we'll visit the camp held at the Taoyuan Jinsi Hall to see how children are learning valuable lessons while having fun at the same time. But first, let's visit the Banqiao Ziji grounds to see how youngsters and their parents are furthering their spiritual growth. <laughs> At the city grounds in Banqiao New Taipei City, children participating in the summer camp are starting their first day by learning to embrace the Dharma. Next, a video footage of hungry children in Africa helps these youngsters to realize how blessed they are and inspires them to act. These children are so poor and they don't have food to eat and all skin and bone. I have decided to save some money to help them. This will make me happier as well. Nearly 400 youngsters are participating this time. Not only do they get to learn about Buddhism, they also learn proper conduct. We must learn to get along with our classmates. If we are always bickering and can't work as a team, things will only get worse. Parents who have joined their children in the camp have noticed the changes in their children and themselves alike. My child is participating in this camp, which gives me the chance to learn more about Tsiji, and I think everything is wonderful here. By utilizing the summer break properly, parents and children have grown together in both mind and spirit. At the Jingsi Hall in Taoyuan, a similar camp is being held, but this year's theme is centered on fairy tales. Everyone loves a good story, especially young children. So we have come up with this fairy tale forest to help them get close to Mother Nature. There are various animals and plants inside the forest, and each holds a different meaning. This apple tree symbolizes that parents have been providing endlessly for their children, meeting every one of their needs. But children should not always just take from their parents. They need to learn to reciprocate. Through interactive games, children learn valuable lessons while having fun at the same time. Each team only has eight children but is assigned to adults. We hope to give these children our personal attention and raise the quality of our program. In total, 120 adults are caring for 180 children at the camp. 
This way, parents who cannot come along can be rest assured that their children are in good hands. The Taizong City Chapter has also organized a summer camp, but the camp caters only to the children of Ciji's care recipients. With the help of students of Ciji University, some 150 participants got to have fun while learning valuable lessons. At a summer camp held in Taizong for the children of Ciji's care recipients, participants learned more about practicing environmental conservation. From a single parent family, though Xiao Zhu has participated for three years in a row, she is still having a great time. I recommend this game here. It helps strengthen your memory. Xiao Zhen's mother is from Vietnam. This is her first time participating in a Ciji camp, and she has learned many useful recycling tips. When we finish our drinks, we need to separate the containers into aluminum or plastic. We have designed a program to help participants think and work independently. There are also tips on environmental conservation. Participants also get to hold a small-scale temple fair to show off what they have learned. By having them go on stage to perform can help build their confidence and sense of achievement. The camp is held with the assistance of students of Ciji University for two days and one night. Some 150 campgoers get to have fun and learn something useful that may help them a long way. In Taizong, a 15-year-old girl has been selling handmade soaps on Donghai Art Street to support her family. The girl's living conditions have may become even more difficult since her father passed away last week, leaving her with the burden of supporting her two younger sisters and grandmother. Learning of this family's plight, local Ciji volunteers have reached out to them. Ciji volunteers brought instant noodles and oatmeal for the Chang family. One of the family members is only 13 years old, but faces a harsh life since her father passed away from lung cancer last week. He is survived by his three daughters and his 84-year-old mother. Ciji volunteers reached out to this family immediately. We will wait till the funeral is over before we evaluate the conditions of their living environment and their needs for tuition as well as living costs. In the Chan family, the oldest daughter is 15 years old and she is about to enter 10th grade. She has been selling handmade soaps on Donghai Art Street to help support her family. In spite of the harsh conditions, she and her two sisters take care of each other. Ciji volunteers are helping the family pay the funeral cost and will also do their best to care for the grandmother while helping the three girls continue their education. Recently, Ciji volunteers from Vietnam's Bindun province visited a solitary senior to gain a further understanding of his needs and to help him clean up his messy home. It seemed when they visited, as if the senior had lost hope that society would reach out a helping hand. Here's more on that story. Earlier in July, Ciji volunteers in Vietnam's Bien Dong province got on their motorcycles and headed out to visit a solitary senior. Moving the flower pots and plants out of the way, volunteers can finally access the senior's home. With cleaning tools in hand, today the volunteers are here to help the senior clean up his home. This is solitary senior Yang Wenshen, who spent all his life savings on hospital visits and is now retired. All he has left now is this dilapidated house. I don't have money right now. All I can offer is my gratitude for your help. Honestly, if I need to pay for someone to help me clean, I wouldn't have the money to do so. To offer the senior some assistance, volunteers have put him on their care recipient list, as well as coming here today to help him clean. Normally at home, I just do some light chores. 
but coming here to help this care recipient clean so thoroughly, I was deeply affected. I would be lying if I said I wasn't tired. Actually, I'm very tired, but I'm very happy that I could be of service to someone. Volunteers not only clean up the place, but also help the senior clear a path to the outside world, as they hope to help him welcome a new page in his life. For the past two years, the Zizi Foundation has been donating 200 bags of rice to a school run by the Philippine Christian Foundation in Tondo, Manila. As many of its students come from impoverished families and often go to school on empty stomachs, the school began a feeding program in which students are provided with two meals a day. Thanks to this rice from Taiwan, students will continue to be nourished mentally and physically for the next three months. Getting their height and weight measurements taken, children of impoverished communities here in the Philippines only have one simple dream, to grow up healthy and strong. bags of rice from Taiwan have been provided to the Philippines Christian Foundation through the Tsuji Foundation to aid a school in Tondo District, Manila. This rice will ensure that students won't go hungry for the next three months. Our students come from really poor communities and their parents scavenge for a living. They're in great financial difficulty. The rice provided by Tsuji will be a great help in ensuring that these children get the nutrients they need. Coming from poverty-stricken families, these children always go to school on empty stomachs. So, for the past 13 years, PFC has been running a feeding program at the school, providing students with breakfast and lunch every day. Additionally, a third meal is provided for students who are malnourished. When I first came to this school in 2006, I was thin and frail and was sick all the time. But thanks to the school's feeding program, I've become healthier and stronger. Nourished mentally and physically, these poor students are one step closer to reaching for their dreams one meal at a time. A bag of rice also has the power to help these students break free from the shackles of poverty. For many leukemia patients, hematopoietic stem cell transplants are their only hope for survival. Yet the rate of pairing matches between two strangers is extremely rare. Fortunately, Cixi has a database of potential donors available through the Cixi Stem Cell Center. This makes the difficult task of finding a suitable donor a bit easier, in turn giving leukemia patients a chance to realize their dreams. Each time the human heart contracts, it pumps out about 70 milliliter of blood. Blood is the fountain of life, and the different types of blood cells are produced by mature hematopoietic stem cells. Yet, when these cells become abnormal, they produce large quantities of white blood cells that prevents the body's bloodstream from functioning normally. This condition is known as leukemia. Thus, hematopoietic stem cell transplants are very important for these patients. Leukemia is very unique because it is a rather menacing illness and very difficult to treat. So, for a large portion of our patients, hematopoietic stem cell transplants are their only hope. For hematopoietic stem cell transplants, both patients and donors have to undergo rigorous assessments to determine their genetic compatibility. The human leukocyte antigen on their six chromosomes must at least match at six sites for transplants to take place. With birth rates rapidly declining, most people do not have any siblings. Patients are either an only child or they have one sibling. Their chances of finding a match are only 25%. Also, the rise of interracial marriages results in the mixing of bloodlines. This makes it rather difficult for some patients to find matches. 
Beginning in 2010, at our hospital, more than half of these transplants rely on non-kin donor matches provided by Ciji's donor database rather than donors within the family. This is the current trend not only in Taiwan but also across the globe. That is, we grow increasingly reliant on non-kin donors for these transplants. <laughs> In 1993, Ciji was commissioned to establish the very first bone marrow donor database in Taiwan. This is also the only non-governmental organization-run database in the world. In the recent years, with the decline in birth rates and the increase in immigration, finding a match has become increasingly difficult. To maintain this database, we must continue to encourage donation. Advances in medical technology have made it easier to collect hematopoietic stem cells. Instead of drawing marrow, a simple collection of peripheral blood cells will now suffice. Currently in Taiwan, there are approximately 1,000 patients waiting for transplants. If the database can be enlarged, the rate of successful pairings will also increase, which will benefit more and more people. Human blood types can be simply divided into four types. However, the rate at which hemotopoietic stem cells of two strangers match is only 1 out of 2,000 to 1 out of 100 million. For the approximately 1,000 patients who are awaiting transplants, finding a donor match is their only hope for survival. To pray for all those affected by the tragic Bali water park explosion, more than 1,500 devotees and Dharma masters from 24 counties and cities in Taiwan came together to join a Dharma service at the Taipei Rinzai Temple. Doing their part to ensure the success of the event, Zi volunteers took up the task of preparing hot meals and providing medical services for the attendees. Let's take a look. Together with 400 Dharma masters, the Dharma service attendees chanted Universal Gate Sutra, dedicating the merit to the victims of the Bali water park explosion. To help provide the burn victims with further medical treatment, the Buddhist Association of the ROC also donated $96,750 to start a medical relief fund. Since this tragedy happened to our fellow countrymen, we need to ask everyone to donate or offer help to the victims. This tragedy happened to youngsters. We hope it will awaken young people so they will think of their families before they do anything. In this Dharma service at Rinzai Zen Temple, nearly 1,500 devotees and Buddhist Dharma masters from Buddhist institutes across 24 counties and cities came together to pray. We hope this Dharma service will benefit all the people. We also pray that the Buddha will bless those affected by the Bali water park explosion so they will recover soon. In addition to praying, city volunteers also form various functional groups, providing medical services for the Dharma service attendees and preparing hot meals for them. We formed various functional groups, welcoming the Dharma masters and providing medical services. We hope to do our part to ensure the success of the Dharma service. Some of the victims are as young as our children, so we pray for their fast recovery with the kind of love we have for our kids. As the Dharma service garners people's kind thoughts and prayers, it also sends a message of hope, faith and courage to those affected by the tragic incident. Among the burn victims of the maize color powder explosion at the Formosa Fun Coast Water Park in Bali, New Taipei City, was Miss Lin, who sustained burns to over 70% of her body. As Miss Lin lives in Hualien, her family felt that they could better care for her closer to home. Hence, after doctors of Dan Shui's Ma Kai Memorial Hospital deemed her condition stable, Miss Lin was transferred to Hualien City Hospital on July 7th. On July 7th, 23-year-old Miss Lin a victim of the Body Water Park explosion was transferred from Danshui's McKay Memorial Hospital to the Hualien City Hospital. This patient has burn injuries covering 70% of her body, including her chest, stomach, and limbs. Miss Lin is currently conscious and able to communicate her needs. As she lives in Hualien, 
Now it is easier for her family to care for her. A sub burn injury covered a larger area. She will require skin grafting, but thus far, it looks like the skin from her back and scalp can be used. I think the chances of a full recovery are pretty good. After the initial assessment by the medical team, Ms. Lin has been moved to the burn ICU. Pending further evaluation, the team will schedule her for further debridement surgery and skin grafting surgery. Grapes are currently in season here in Taiwan. With the farm in Nantou Xinyi Township, Mr. Liu and his wife would normally be busy harvesting their grapes. Unfortunately, their son was among those injured in the Bali water park explosion and is currently hospitalized with 70% burns to his body in Dan Shui's Makai Memorial Hospital. Even though the couple knows several typhoons are heading towards Taiwan, they just can't leave their son's side. Thankfully, city volunteers and Mr. Liu's family members have pitched in to help. With typhoons looming, city volunteers are helping the grape farm in Nantou's Xingyi Township harvest its grapes. See this knot here on the stem? That's where you cut. At the farmhouse, volunteers experienced in farming teach others how to package the grapes. Loosen the protective wrapping. You can remove the grapes easily and place them here. A total of some 20 Tuji volunteers are helping Mr. Liu, who is caring for his son, a hospitalized victim of the Bali water park explosion. Through a video chat with Mr. Liu, the volunteers learned that the boy, who suffered 70% burns to his body, is improving. Your love is his strongest support. He can surely feel it, and he's being very, very brave, right? It must be so. Yes, he has been very brave. He has been comforting us. Despite the pain, he has been telling us that you will be all right. As this happens to be grape harvesting season, Mr. Liu could lose everything if the fruit is not harvested before the typhoons arrive. I was really caught off guard by what happened to my son. My whole world has been turned upside down. I must thank these city volunteers. Without them, my grapes could not be harvested. Seven tons of grapes were harvested, and they have already been purchased by Tsuji and Good Samaritans, such as Acton Technology of Xinzhu, which purchased 200 boxes, with the proceeds going to pay for the medical bills of Mr. Liu's son. Meanwhile, Tsuji volunteers are delivering grapes they bought from Mr. Liu's farm to all hospitals caring for victims of the Bali explosion. We have received everyone's support and love. This means a great deal to all of us. In hospitals across Taiwan, medical personnel are doing all they can to care for all burn victims of the explosion. And Mr. Liu's grapes, delivered by Tsuji, are but small tokens of appreciation for their efforts. 20 boxes of Mr. Liu's grapes from the story we just saw made it to the Danshui Makai Memorial Hospital, where Mr. Liu's son is hospitalized. To thank the staff for working so hard to save his son's life, Mr. Liu personally handed them his grapes. We leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.